podcast where we play metroidvania games i'm a robot inside of a heat resistant suit named thomas blight and with my co-host eric fox hello i am the only one who can prevent forest fires Smokey told me wait what is that a easter egg that i did not find in the game it's vaguely related to environmentalism <laughs> oh yeah um and we've been playing environmental station alpha uh, a game which I keep wanting to call Environment Station Alpha. For some reason, that just sounds better to me. Well, I'll take it up with him, Pooley, okay? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it's an indie Metroidvania from 2015. I'm apparently just going to get this done right at the beginning of the podcast. Um, top-rated games from 2015 that you might remember. Uh, the Witcher 3, Fallout 4, uh, Lara Croft Go. All, all of these uh, competing in the exact same space. Yes, yes, all, all of them exactly the same. Fallout Shelter. Oh, Helldivers. Okay. Her Story. Oh, man. There's... Ori in the Blind Forest. Sorry, what, what did you want to say about Her Story? Oh, just the fact that they both uh, end up being a game that you play until you are satisfied. <laughs> but how do I know I'm satisfied? That's a big question. <laughs> um, Ori in the Blind Forest, which is another Metroidvania game and one we should really get to at some point. It was fairly significant, yes. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, The Phantom Pain, uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer, which slaps. <laughs> In many ways. <laughs> uh, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Rocket League, Bloodborne, and Life is Strange. A lot of different games that were like pretty significant all came out in 2015, huh? Yeah. I mean, this is just the ones that actually won, like, notable awards and there's plenty of top critically rated games that i do not want to delve into fair enough and amidst all of that in comes this little game that could honestly i found it incredibly charming <laughs> I, I i'm mixed on it overall um but it is pretty charming uh i was surprised i guess uh, so i'm i have strong opinions about pixel art okay and one of those opinions about pixel art is usually if the characters are not large enough, I don't like it. So you, you want, like, several significant digits of uh, number of pixels in your art? Yeah, like, usually the character needs to be large enough that they can, like, emote. Uh, and, like, something like, uh, I think, Risk of Rain 1 where they're just like a tiny little speck. I'm like, nah, nah, not into that. You bounced off of Risk of Rain. That's a, I, that's a game. That's one of my favorite games. I've actually never touched it because I don't like the pixel art, but that's kind of a dumb reason not to play. Um, but I feel like despite the fact that you're like, I don't know, eight pixels tall or something. And these are fairly chunky pixels too. Yeah. The resolution is, we'll say, very deliberate. Yeah, minimalist. minimalist. Um, despite that, they actually managed to get some fairly good pixel art out of it, I felt. Right? Like, the like it, the blocks in the environment look like things. They don't just look like random pixels. Right? And at a really small level, that's really hard to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like the... Um... Like conveying information about both like what you can interact with uh, and what it's supposed to be in this derelict uh, space station, uh, I thought was really good, especially one that's fairly concerned with different environments, uh, hence the name. You got a whole bunch of different uh, biomes, the, uh, the hot zone, the plant zone, the water zone. They're all, they all have very unique character, and I found it very cool when you have to explore all of these different areas, and especially late in the game, where details are very important for when it, you're getting into the, uh, we'll call it the post game. Yeah, and like I guess that's also kind of like it's sort of an exclu excuse plot for the thing that just about all Metroidvanias do, where they like they've got to have a fire zone or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's very much woven into what 
what little narrative there is, uh, which uh, to kind of get into the setup of this game is there's a space station. You are a cool robot man sent to investigate it. And unlike Metroid, it doesn't turn out that uh, you're, you're actually a cool bounty hunter or human. No, you're a robot. You, you, Robo is you trying to figure out what happened. And it turns out that ancient alien virus happened. Basically, you try and turn things back on, try and stop the virus, discover that there's more to the ancient alien temples that they built the space station into than you realized. Yeah, just just build a space station on an ancient alien temple. It'll be fine. It'll, it ne- literally never, ever goes wrong. Except in this one case. It's the exception that proves the rule. Uh, and what I found kind of uh, interesting is that there are several endings to this game, and none of them are what I would describe as a good end. Yeah, I mean, th- that's one of the things of, like, I wasn't satisfied by a lot of the endings either. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Actually, I forgot to look up the ones that I didn't get. Sure. But the ones that I did get, like, the regular ending, mm-hmm. it's definitely not a good ending, and then the... Uh, post-game based ending was just kind of like, wait, what? Yeah. What even just happened? <laughs> and it's not, yeah, like, this game has a lot of, like, text logs, but they don't go into too much detail. There's some lore hinted at, but again, no, nothing really clearly spelled out, especially from the endings, but like, the one that, like, basically you'll get guaranteed if you just go and play it as a normal Metroidvania is that you fight the virus, it infects you, you take it back, and it's implied that, well, that's the end of civilization. Yep, it was contained before, now it's infected everything. Or, you can also go to uh, uh, the forlorn planet, walk to the right a whole bunch, and basically it's implied that, okay, you, you've contained the virus in yourself, and you're just kind of going to wait it out until you're, you cease functioning, but if anyone ever discovers you, uh, 30 go to 10, civilization ends as we know it once again. Yeah, fun times. Oh, yeah, I actually sort of missed until the very ending uh, that you were a robot. I don't know. For some reason, I just assumed you were a, a human in a suit. Yeah, actually, uh, me too. I- I'm not sure if there's like extraneous text that I just missed or whatever, but you, yeah, you are just a robot and you get you find upgrades to your stuff throughout and you you can turn them on and off which was also an interesting thing yeah that <laughs> I, like i mean it showed up in the post game uh, but i didn't really see much reason to do that outside of the post game yeah like yeah you can you find say the double jump and you can turn off the double jump but there's no benefit to that it's not like there's resources that are being used by having it on no, there's a fair few uh, pretty standard upgrades that you'll get, right? Yeah, I, like I guess something that might have been more interesting is do like mutual exclusion. Um, so like I like some of the Mega Man games, uh, Mega Man X games, dabble in that every once in a while, where it's like, okay, so you can have this upgrade or this upgrade, but not both at the same time. Yeah, I can see that if you'd have to implement it in a very specific way because otherwise that just becomes a huge pain in the neck having to constantly either swap between two different things uh, on the like on the fly oh yeah and it's typically not done for traversal abilities it's typically done for like attack abilities right so it'd be like uh if you could choose between every shot you have you make as a charged shot or uh i don't know extreme rapid fire or something or there's that one upgrade that splits your beam into three for uh, more, like, coverage. You can have yeah. that. But honestly, having all of them at the same time for this game, which isn't too terribly combat-focused, it has bosses. It isn't and it isn't. Like, okay. I, I felt like there's a fair... Like, there's the fights are with bosses are intense, right? Sure. Um, and I felt... 
at least once you get the horizontal dash and it can be like, okay, yeah, you have a horizontal dash. I can throw like tons of stuff at you. I felt like art is pretty uh, dodging heavy. It's not quite a like bullet hell level. But because they gave you a like invulnerability frames, uh, quick dodge, then suddenly you like they can give you more active, like hectic boss encounters, I guess. Yeah, and like your health always stayed pretty low, so like there were a bunch of times when I died to regular enemies. Yeah, certain certain periods if you're uh, between like your health stations. Some of these enemies, if you're not being careful around them or taking care of them, or occasionally it's actually just better to like run past it with uh, your traversal abilities. It becomes kind of that attrition based. Uh, you're never sure when the next save point's around, and your health's low, and there aren't really health pickups. Yeah, there's no pickups uh, that aren't permanent upgrades. Yeah, like no ammo. You only ha- you really only have your beam, which is not like super long range, and occasionally just upgrades to that to in- either increase its firepower or like spread. Yeah, I kept expecting there to be a range expend- extender upgrade. Um, the like the charge shot short of, sort of functions in, as that in that the charge shot is longer. It is slightly longer. So is the three way split, I guess. The three way split mostly helps you uh, hit on diagonals because otherwise you can only aim in the cardinal directions. Yeah, yeah. There are there are se- definitely sequences in this, um, especially the hell run you gotta do. Uh, hot zone, classic. You don't have your heat resistance stuff yet, but you gotta get through it, and you're just taking residual damage over time. So that's the, the Hell Run stuff is funny. Whenever it shows up in games, I can never decide if the game wants me to avoid there until I get the upgrade, or if they want me to suffer a little bit, and then I'll get the upgrade. Right? This one was definitely the suffer a little bit. You... Yes, uh, the blood is compulsory. You must suffer for your art. Uh, I think there is a um, a log that basically pretty much tells you that the way forward is through here. You will need to. And yeah, it was it was an awkward bit of the damage you're taking isn't so bad, but you're not sure how long you're going to be in it. But yeah. I, I thought it was fine. Uh, it was... Yeah, it's all right. It's just like, I think I tried to expend every other option first and then it was like okay i guess it do- really does want me to do this oh yeah same like th- those kind of things are always the last resort make sure you've gotten all the things you need especially any health upgrades if you uh are, were missing any those will definitely help but yeah although there's not that many health upgrades in this game uh no it, it's a very specific amount of health that you get to i think you start with 10 get up to 30 uh, depending on the difficulty, you're going to be taking more damage for any given hit. Yeah, for the most part, the pickups are either immediately useful or part of the extraneous like bonus 100% completion content, like the discs, which mostly unlock art, but also hints for the secret endings kind of stuff. Yeah, I I did find it kind of funny that there's more post-game unlocks. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not counting the power-ups, I guess. But there are a sizable number of post-game unlocks compared to the number of regular game unlocks, I guess. Yes. Uh, and I'm part of why I, th- I was kind of thinking of this game not being terribly combat-focused is that in terms of pure like game time, I think oh, like more than half of my, like what is it, 18 and a half hours or so Steam tells me, is took place after the normal final boss and so like the in my mind the vast majority of the time is doing the extra explorey bits where the game kind of becomes a different game for a while yeah that that's true i i kind of liked the the regular game part better better than before it became a uh cypher decoding really like a giant puzzle puzzle box kind of thing I mean, I think it, the puzzle box is fine. I, I don't know that it was paced amazingly. Sure. Where I feel like the pace of the regular game was actually pretty good. Yeah, the the, 
the normal game before it like actually unlocks is like a really solid action platformer. I think like it has like your double jump, your dashes. It also has the grapple beam, uh, <laughs> kind of, but implemented ve- very differently from Metroid. Whereas yeah. Metroid is there are very specific tiles you can use, and it's kind of slow, but it gets you laterally. Whereas in this game, there are specific tiles where it can't be used, and otherwise you swing like a monkey, and it is great. I love it. You use it for various like uh, physics-based, like you have to fall a certain distance to gain momentum to swing around and go up higher. Uh, you use it in combination with your other abilities to like... Because you can only dash once, double jump once, and so you use all of your abilities to get to certain places pretty much throughout the game. Yeah, I think like a lot of the bosses kind of make use of that. Like make use of the things you're getting pretty well, not just the dodge roll, but uh there's at least one late game boss that is essentially the platforming boss that I don't think you actually were able to find. Uh which one is that? Is that Miwa part 2? That's Muaya part or, 2. Y- mu- yeah, <laughs> however you say that name. There yeah, the bonus boss who's kind of like he, who is a named entity but has the least cromulent name I think I've seen in quite a while. Muaya. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we should get into that because I have thoughts on that. But I wanted to complain about the hookshot first. Uh, okay, yeah, what sure. What the grapple yeah. beam is actually called. I was not a big fan of this. I mean, like, the swinging was fine. I got very frustrated at some of the sections where it expected you to be able to do it fairly consistently in order to launch yourself upward. The biggest one for me was the section where you turn off the plant growth inhibitor. I can't remember what the actual name of that was. Sure, basically you kill all the plants in the plant zone. Well, no, it's like you you allow the plants to grow unchecked in the plant zone. Oh, okay. Right, or like, I don't know, somehow... It, somehow it did both, which confused me a little, right? Where it's like, you turn off that thing, and then suddenly there's roots everywhere. Uh, yeah, I, I interpret that as, like, everything kind of died and, like, uh, kind of, like, it collapsed a little bit. And so all of those are just, like, dead trees that have kind of, like, would, wouldn't have been in your way before, but now are, which... I'd suppose. But my frustration with this is that, uh, I had, like, the big frustration for me was... Uh, it would expect you to do like a couple hook shots in a row. There, notably, this game didn't implement upward platforms that you can uh, optionally drop through. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm expl- stressing that weirdly, but like you know, uh, like platforms that you can drop down if you want to, but you yeah. don't have to. Um, this has the opposite: things that you can't go up through, but it doesn't have. Uh, things that you can go down through if you want. The classic hold down, press jump, and you kind of just phase through it. This does not exist. Yeah, so that what that led to was like a fairly long sequence of hook shots that if you screwed one up, you would fall and have to repeat about half the sequence at least. Um, yeah. Which was very frustrating. It was doubly frustrating because I I just wasn't at a good level with that. And that's a, like a particularly hard gauntlet, um, because once you turn that plant growth thing off or on, like when, when you flip the switch, um, you have to go back and the, the path is rerouted through the bees that you could you avoided earlier or were optional to go through earlier. And they have respawned regardless of whether or not you cleared them out, because this game responds to things as soon as you leave the scene. Yeah. And so I think I spent like probably a half hour or more just doing this one sequence. Oh of no. Getting up there, failing the uh hook shots a couple times, falling back down to the bottom of the hook shot uh vertical uh sequence, finally getting it, turning the plant growth off, and then dying to the bees. Okay, yeah, I think I'm now remembering what sequence that is, and yeah, that's, I think the one sequence in the game that I'd say is, like, a bit attuned uh, to difficult, like, outside of that one, though, because, yeah, like, you have to do the sequence, if you fall, 
you're just done. But you only have to do it once. You only have to, like, it's not part of the, when you're, like, going around searching for stuff. You yeah. don't, like, using the hookshot does not ever punish you that much. And until you get the boost, using the hookshot is actually the fastest way to get around. Yeah, I, there are, the, my other one complaint is the places where you need to hookshot to get someplace, but there are also turrets that you can't destroy. Those spawn when you turn the power and like security system back on? Uh, I thought they were running already before that. Um, in specifically the grass biome, there's uh, the like pillar turrets, and there's a teleporter on the other end of it. Um, yeah, there's acid acid water, and you have to swing um, across, and there's also pillar turrets. Um, all it gets you is a teleporter, so that one wasn't that big of a deal. Um, there's also one in the sand area, which wasn't actually necessary for moving forward that I can recall. Um, I did it anyway because I was frantically looking for health pickups, and the health pickup one screen to the right of that taunts you for the <laughs> longest time. You see it, but you don't quite have what you need yet. And then when you think you have what you need, it turns out, no, nah, you're still missing the upward boost or whatever. Yeah, that that one was a little frustrating, just in terms of, like, it's obvious you you will not get it until, like, 80% through the regular game. At least. Yeah. Like, it becomes easy if you wait till you have basically everything else. One of the last upgrades you get is infinite boost any direction forever. Yeah. So, like, I guess what I'm trying to get at there is, like, I don't know, like, I play, like, precision platformers, right? Like, I've played Super Meat Boy and I Want to Be the Guy and Celeste, right? Yeah. And in those, usually there is a hard thing, but... I mean, I, this isn't super true of I Want to Be the Guy, actually. Um, there's a hard thing, but then once you're past that hard thing, there is a place where you can just rest and attempt other hard things from, right? Right. This, I felt like, in a couple of the places, it was just like, look, if you want me to do this, then just make it so that I don't have to retry the, the thing over here every time I fail the thing on the next thing you want it to be compartmentalized a bit more yeah which i don't know maybe i'm just crabby about i'm sure there are plenty of people who think of like that is a, a fault of like i don't know dark souls or something right <laughs> like hey why do i have to get through each of these encounters every time i fail the the next encounter or something like that so that's fair Kind of, yeah. Like, I'm going to say that I didn't have the same experience you did. I thought that sec section was pretty hard, but I don't think, like, I, did, I didn't die after completing it the one time. No, oh, I just I just kept screwing up with the bees and the amount of time it took me to get back to attempting the bees yeah. was, uh, like, so frustrating for me because I kept screwing up the hook shots that, like a major frustration for me. I actually ended up leaving trying to find everything I could possibly find uh, without doing that section, uh, which included getting the triple shot then. Okay, yeah. That would have helped, because I believe the boss of that area is kind of a uh, kind of a mean boy. Yeah, he is pretty hard. Yeah, that was one of the one of the bosses that kind of stuck out, stuck out is like... Uh, it reminded me a little bit of Spore Spawn, if Spore Spawn wasn't incredibly boring and its spores were very deadly and it spawned things that could kill you. <laughs> so not that much like Spore Spawn other than that they're well, plants. It's like a hotel for dogs, except instead of for dogs, it's for death. Instead of a hotel, it's boss. <laughs> um, I mean, I liked that boss. I thought that oh, was one too. of the like, better bosses. Minus, I guess... Uh, the first phase, having timed vulnerability, got really frustrating when you were failing against the third phase. Yeah, the, it was a multi-phase. It's one of the, like, the first ones that really kicks, kicks you in your uh, teeth. P between that and the, uh, the shark boss or whatever. Serpent 5. Serpent 5, the one that uh, doesn't really have a pattern. You kinda, It's more uh, reaction. Yeah. I And also the game locks you in with the boss, which was... Great, 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 cool, 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 cool. 
you you must be this tall to proceed unfortunately yeah which was frustrating because i i was feeling stuck against him and i was like okay i'll go find health kits right the thing that you do in every metroidvania when you are stuck against a boss and feel like you're not getting anywhere learning their patterns um, yeah. only to find out i couldn't leave because all of the exits from there that don't involve going through him involve needing one of the dash parts yeah i th- yeah what you get from him was oh what was it you get the charged shot immediately before him oh so yeah i i much preferred the bosses uh once you get the horizontal dash just like it is known you love combat dashes it's true but like your your base move speed is just so slow and uh, again i also hated the hook shot so I like <laughs> the thing that makes it better. <laughs> definitely not up with in a boss fight using the hook shot for anything other than traversing a flat roof. Okay. That was fine. I I that can be done just by like consistently pressing the button, right? But like trying to get more like threading the needle through different platforms, uh like in Serpent Fives not up for it, so I kind of feel like beating Serpent 5 was entirely luck for me. No, like, I I don't know. I didn't have trouble with Serpent 5 all that much. Uh, a couple of tries. At a certain point, uh, like, when he gets into his, like, second pissy boss mode phase, uh, that was kind of attrition-y. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, that was my problem, is that I feel like your, your move speed was not actually fast enough to uh, attempt to dodge. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of it was trying to, like, because he reacts a little bit to your movement in trying to, like, figure out a way to corral him that way. Yeah. But I'm not, yeah, like, I think this isn't so much a case of, oh, I just, I'm just better or whatever, and I <laughs> didn't have as much frustration. I just think I have an incredible tolerance for bullshit. Like, absolutely, I'm not going to pretend that I don't play, like, incredibly long, tedious JRPGs and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, my tolerance is pretty good, uh, yeah. but I have to be able to see a way forward. Like, it's the difference between, like, okay, well, I died and now I don't know how I can fix that versus, oh, yeah, I died, but that that's because I didn't do this, this right. Right. Kind of thing, right? And that one, was, that one was definitely more of a, like, well, what am I supposed to do here? That's, that's a shame, but outside of that boss... What was what, 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 what was your favorite boss? Whoa, 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 let me let me let me let me hear you. Let me hear some positives from you first for a change. <laughs> I mean, despite the long first form where you can't deal damage except for in specific periods, I think the plant was actually my favorite. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's certainly the most memorable for me. Maybe that's not a great motivation for that. I'm trying to remember. I, like, I'm having trouble remembering what bosses there were after the plant now. There was, uh, this. I believe there was the security bot where, where you needed to actually use its own projectiles, your own, like, your weaponry was ineffective, so it was effectively a uh, very specific phase-based boss. There was the final, or quote-unquote final, uh, encounter with the virus, which had three distinct phases. Yeah. Oh, and there was that, uh... Was it Mound of Flesh thing? Yeah, the plague. In the uh, de- derelict spaceship. Yeah, yeah, And then there's also, of course, what it was, in my opinion, the only actually legitimately badly designed boss, which was the uh, Forsaken, was it? The ghost? Uh, oh, the in the temple? In the temple, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't find that so bad. It... I mean, it was a lot of I'm just going to put a lot on the screen and hope you and you have to hope to deal with it. I guess it's not so much that I had a problem with like what it was doing so much as how long it took to kill versus like how many different things it could do. Hmm. It's a boss that you kind of have to not use your charge shot for a lot of it. Really, I didn't find that to be true. Really, mostly I found more effect. It was more effective to rapid fire. Hmm. Okay. Maybe it would have been easier for me to rapid fire, but... Or maybe I'm a dumbass. It could be either. <laughs> but it was just a very long uh, boss where, okay, he has, like, four different things it could do. Uh, like, they were differently uh, vulnerable during each. Like, you'd either spawn some dudes, or fire projectile, you gotta, like, dash around. Or uh, just kind of stomp, and you have to 
position yourself very specifically in between his uh between his feet. Oh, sorry, you're talking about the the restless spirit in the yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking of the entirely wrong wrong temple. Oh, okay. Um, I was thinking about the one shortly before the heat suit. Uh, the idol or something. I can't remember what that guy did. Uh, mostly made lasers that you had had to dash through. Okay, yeah. Clearly, yeah, like... Yeah, sorry, the Restless Spirit was kind of obnoxious. Uh, I mean, my big annoyance with the Restless Spirit is that it did that thing that uh, I feel like is an in- indication of a bad design, where it's Hurtbox didn't follow the... Uh, or not Hurtbox, well, Hitbox. Uh, yeah, it's Hitbox didn't follow the weak point when the weak point moved in the sprite. Oh, okay. Right? So, like... When it slams the ground, its head goes down, but you can still hit it by shooting above its head. Right, yeah, yeah. And it's like, mm, you could have moved that. I don't know. I That one was also kind of annoying in that, like, I'm not very big on uh, games that give you something and then apparently decide that they need to take that thing away. In this case, it's they took away the supercharger, which allows you, you to make every shot you fire a charge shot. Yes. And also throws in enemies in that uh, fight, which were in the area before it, um, that will hit you if you use a charge shot. If you use a charge shot or dash i believe yes or dash i i still exclusively used charge shots on him just because i'm stubborn um (laughs) and killed the the enemy that punishes you for the charge shots and dashes with the plasma barrier that circles around you you just got to get real close to it i never used that thing i was always too scared because it's not like it's very tight around your tiny body i guess but it's not like you have plenty of room for it to be damaging enemies that sit still without needing to worry about it. I wasn't relying on it for most of the game as a source of damage. Apparently it's pretty good damage, too. Speedrun makes use of it. Yeah, it seemed alright. I think individual ticks of it are comparable with your uncharged shot, and it ticks, like, every frame or something like that. Yeah, it's uh, quite good. Um, Yeah, the Restless Spirit, I ended up... uh, I don't know why I didn't think of this strategy before it, um, but whenever he was walking across the screen, I just dashed above his head until all of the all but one of the pillars were gone. Okay, see, I just I dashed through him in between like one of the two like pillars that he's uh, summoned, and I was able to just kind of like use the try shot to rapid fire him down. That was that was the phase that I got the most amount of damage in any given time. Yeah, I mean. I I was doing that initially, and I was just not very good at aiming at between the pillars when I was dashing through him. So I was like, "Whatever, I'm I'm gonna change this up." Yeah, it's pretty tight, and I'm and I'm stubborn, so I decided, <laughs> you know what? If this takes a hundred tries, so be it. And kind of did, but yeah, it's just a really long fight that you have to pretty much play pretty precisely throughout the entire thing. And uh, I think half health, he's yeah, it's in another new uh, ability out of nowhere where he teleports onto you if you're not prepared yeah that was somewhat annoying in terms of like telegraphing but it it was kind of a gotcha moment but after he gets you with it the first time you kind of know what to expect yeah and he was he's super inconsistent about whether he uses it um there's definitely times where i was just like okay he did that once that'll never happen again um and then other like in one attempt he did it like four or five times and was like okay so i was just getting lucky before it was entirely random what move he does. It's not a sequence. Yeah. Yeah, that's all added on after the fact, by the way. That entire section of the game. Which segues into the other thing, which let's talk about Muya. Muya. M W Y A H. Um so you need to to beat that restless spirit in order to hurt Miwa in the second form, which I didn't know. I thought this was part of the post game, um, so I went and started doing the rest of the post game. Um, at the end of the the post game, you reach a, a point where it is just like, okay, you're at an ending now, and then puts you into new game plus. Yeah, and guess what? You can't go and do now that you're in new game plus. You can't go and fight 
and me, me, yeah, again. <laughs> Man, I really need to figure out a way to say this name. It, it, it's just like you're you're faking a kiss, mua, except Mouya. you're also saying ya. Yeah. Mua, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I I was at once I was done the post game, I was not willing to go back and do enough of the post game to get to both of those fights again. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that the way that like progression is locked when you do new game plus like you have everything like you have all your uh, all your upgrades all the dashes all that's good stuff you also have all the teleporters unlocked so you could theoretically just warp directly to first moaya fight or actually need to go and do all the p- pillars first which is a whole other thing yeah i assume the pillars didn't stay i didn't actually check because i didn't want to go through that gauntlet uh, speaking of someone who also needed to do New Game Plus to, in order to fight the Moaya for the second time, because I also did exactly what you did, uh, <laughs> yeah, you need to do the pillars first, then fight Moaya again, and then you can, I think you can just go to a second Moaya at that point. Uh, I think you have to f- kill the Restless Spirit as well to damage him. I definitely didn't. Oh, okay. I thought that was what things were saying. Was that the entire point of the orbs and the Restless Spirit thing was that you needed needed it to kill him, but maybe that that part actually persisted across new game pluses yeah it's weird there's a there's a lot of progression things that carry over and honestly i think the second moaya fight might have been my favorite but that's mostly because it was mostly focused on uh platforming challenges other rather than uh strictly combat like it's it's just a big guy you have to climb up several times in different ways with different things to avoid yeah oh yeah the station ai the first time the, the like skull forms that was yep. pretty fun. Yeah. I like the first Moaya fight a lot, too, too, though. Like, there are a lot of sections where you just kind of have to hover above a uh, nightmare floor while also dodging different patterns of beams. I'm I'm so-so on that. It depends. Like, that kind of fight really depends. Uh, did you notice that you don't actually need to attack him very fast? Nah, uh, no. If you don't attack uh, while he appears, he just waits for you to attack him. Oh. He'll fire his, like, four um, balls that then explode when they hit the walls. Um, And then once those, like, you can just dodge those, and he will do nothing until you hit him, and then he'll disappear and do another one. Okay, so that that one's more uh, scripted, in a sense. Yeah. Or, the other thing you can do, which is what I actually uh, did, is that, w- you know when he first appears after doing uh, the Floor is Lava stuff? Yeah. Um, he's vulnerable then. If you are in position and mash, uh, you can get him to transition to the next phase without ever having shot at you. I think I think I might have done that accidentally, just because I, I'm always greedy. But I think in my, my winning sequence, I did that almost all of the phases. Oh, good. But, like, you have to be in position when you he starts it, and it's pretty hard to get into position on some of the later ones. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, that was fun. It's... It's fun. They're fun. They're fun bosses. They're fun encounters. I like doing them, except one just kind of dragging on a little long. Hmm. But, like, at a certain point, the game is no longer about finding bosses, but instead finding secrets. And this game is deceptive in how many in like how it presents its secrets a little bit. Yeah. At a certain point you start running into alien text that if you're I think after you've gotten at least one ending, there's like these little creatures that appear that'll start giving you hints about where to find keys or where to where to find uh spots to type a code. And like you actually do have to type in the keyboard. Uh, shoutouts to uh, Mesa Gallius. <laughs> we now got two. We now got two games with uh, key- keyboard commands in addition to uh, regular platforming. Yeah, I. My one annoyance about that is that I had found all of the spots where the animals were before the animals appeared. Uh, yeah, and like my first time, like my initial stuff through the game like i typically found them like the first time i was in an area and i was like you know this place looks like there should be something here yeah but there's not did but it it stayed in your uh mental map a little bit um 
most of them did. Ironically, the um, the eagle one didn't because there is something there. There's a, a monitor. Oh, okay. Uh, and the eagle one is the one that you need in order to start decoding. So, fun fact. Um, I mean, you don't need it, need it. You could probably just dictionary attack and assume the most popular text is the most popular. So that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's like a dictionary attack, but like... Uh, in the room where it's trying to give you clues about um, where to find the all the words in order to unlock the maze, you gotta go stand on the t- platform and type it out. Uh, all of the instructions are in that c- different language, and I just kind of sat there and was just like, "I bet I can pick out the word the." And so I kind of, assuming that, then started like actually like handwriting out all the symbols <laughs> like this that I think they are. That's where you figured it out? Yeah, that room, I I was able to get through the entire text, just kind of going like, I bet, like, trying to think, okay, it's got to be this, and because it's this, going through, like, okay, all of these symbols are that letter, that makes sense. I got one wrong and I had to correct it, but otherwise, I'm pretty sure I still have the one sheet that has all of my notes, all of my hastily scrawled representation of what the symbols were. Oh, I just took screenshots and put it into a image program. That took that took too long for me for what I was doing. Looking at my notes, I think they managed never to use a J or a Z. I believe you're correct. <laughs> so I just have holes in my cipher for what a J or a Z is. Yep. I mean they're they're not particularly common. Um Wait, so you found all of the keys without translating what the aliens were saying? Uh, no, I, like, after I did, after I went through that, I just had most of the letters from that, so then I found the, uh, the, the hints for where the keys were. No, you, you said you got it from the clock, right? No, I got it from the, uh, uh, where you type in the thing to unlock the maze, um, in the heat zone. Oh, okay, yeah, that. All right. Yeah, yeah, no. That thing confused me a little. I'm not sure if I managed to skip through it the first time, or I just forgot or something, because I swear it only had one line of text the first time I read it. And then at one point it's like, only the knowledgeable will get through in the maze, which was apparently supposed to be a hint to go back to the stand. Yeah. um, And figure it out. Um, I was like, this has more text than it used to. I don't know if I'm just crazy or... I think you're crazy because uh, I never saw it having any less than the text it had. I think either the first or second time I went and looked at it uh, is when I decided, oh, I'm going to translate all this. And then it gives you a bunch of hints for what the code to type in, which is various spots in the map, like kind of built into the map. It'll show you some something relating to a number and a symbol that is translated to a letter on your keyboard and you kind of put that just like those four letters in order and that's your code yeah it's kind of funny i definitely saw all of them and did not even think that there there was anything there um until after that i only ended up finding two but at that point i'd also already seen a reference to moaya which spoiler alert the code is moaya what yeah m y uh m w uh y a now I need to check my my notes. <laughs> so I don't think it was... Or maybe it was without the... I mean, it's only four characters long, isn't it? Yeah, there's no H at the end, but uh, I I got the Y and the A, and then I'm just like, maybe? And then... Oh yeah, I guess it, it is M-W-Y-A. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, so I, I did not... Didn't put those two, in, two together. Um, okay, that's interesting. I, like, I found the stand really, really early on. Uh, I compulsively attack walls yep uh which worked out pretty well in this game although a little oddly in terms of the sequence because i found the stand early i on the other hand was just like "Eh, alien language i don't know how to decipher this i assume that if it wants me to it will tell me otherwise it will give me a translator a la la mulana yeah and it kind of did but it hid the translator and only gave you a sample sentence to then like okay here you go uh translate the rest from here yeah uh like the other part where attacking walls randomly uh helped you out with is i found uh second moya's uh room very early on 
uh, and I also got into the uh, research outpost very early on, and I was not prepared for the research outpost. No, 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 no. Of course not. I can't even remember if I actually had... I don't think I had Dash Booster X when I got to the research outpost. Really? Okay. Yeah, which made it very difficult. Dash Booster X being the infinite dash? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then I later did the proper way to find the stuff that tells you, hey, go to the research outpost. And I was like, oh, was I not supposed to be there already? Hmm. Yeah, I think I actually did need to get told that one. Because I just saw, like, the big wall, and instead of, like, actually firing at anything, I'm just like, oh, this gets unlocked later, I guess. I I have another way to go. Yeah. Oh, which reminds me, actually, uh, not totally related, but a pet peeve of mine um, that this game does is if you're going to require multiple upgrades, it'd be really nice if it showed them all on the same screen. So in particular, I will would say the location of one of the aliens, uh, not particularly relevant to the alien, it's just a useful note for where it is. Um, on the the screen before it, it only require it looks like it only requires the charged shot to get to. Okay. And then you enter it, and it turns out, uh, no, there are dash breakable blocks that are uh, downward from you, so you need dash booster V. I, I get you. Like, because like, you've seen this the room bef- like before it, and you're like, okay, I'll come back when I have that thing. Because, you know, you're a, good, you're a good player. You remember things. And so you get the required item, and you're like, ah, finally, let's see what's passed here. And it turns out it's another locked door. Hello. Yeah, that's, that's a real pet peeve of mine in Metroidvanias. It's like, either put the, the later and harder to get upgrade first, or make them all clear from the room that you have to, like, from where you, you access them. Or just have a minor, uh, like, goodie, like, past the first hurdle. But I guess this game doesn't really have minor goodies. Yeah, like, if this game had missile upgrades, that's definitely where you should have a missile upgrade kind of thing, right? Yeah. It's like, congratulations, you did it. There's something further here, but have a candy. Have a candy, remember this place. Bye. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, I think there was parts of Metroid Prime that I complained about, too, of, like, places where uh, if you went back there immediately with the X-ray visor, you'd just reach a plasma beam door. You'd be like, great. Great, great, great. Great, great, great. That was that was a useful uh, backtrack. But that plasma door will stick out in your mind now. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, post-game, I forget if there's... A- anything that actually hints at the pillars or if you actually just kind of need to find them yourself uh like with their location or the fact that you need them the uh the places to shut off the pillars oh yeah no um there's two discs that you get and when you go to the disc reader and can see them uh for most of them it's just splash art of all the different zones one of which is uh special if you're uh trying to find that password that I was mentioning before. But two of them have like these like little scrawled notes that are like kind of oblique references to just map rooms. You can kind of tell from like the surrounding details where it would, where it would be and they just kind of indicate with an X like, hey, there's something here and those are where all the uh, pillars are located. Oh. Huh. You know, I noticed those, but very late and it, like I looked at my map and was like, oh, well, I already have those room on, rooms on my map. So... I guess I didn't notice that that was the pillar room specifically. Yep. All, yeah, all four pillar rooms are indicated that way. Uh, they'll just like show you a bit of map out of context, but you can see like there might be a detail of like, oh, there's a goodie here, and then if you go down and through a wall that's not that's not like listed on the map, you can find it. Yeah, yeah that's there's... how I found them all. I, I need that. I need that hint. Oh, okay. I I found. I think I knew about. Most of them naturally. I think. I think if you're really uh, getting anal about uh, rubbing up against every wall, shooting every wall, you'll find them naturally, regardless. But yeah. having that there was pretty handy. The keys. I definitely needed the aliens. Oh yeah, because like, like one of them is you need to like dash past a wall instead of just running through it normally to get to a like secret others. Like the door will like lead to a different zone in that case, and it's a. 
an entire reference to Turian from uh, Metroid. I don't actually remember how that worked in Metroid. I mean, it's just a really long, uh, like, gray hallway. Uh, oh, sorry. Not not the way getting, to get in. You mean just the... Yeah, just the area. The way to get in is just you need to follow the thing's instructions and kind of know that when it says move fast, it means boost. Or head quickly past the visible doorway. Phase through the air. Yeah, so the pillars, I actually got kind of confused them for um, something that's immediately before the regular boss for a while. Oh? Because uh, there's like four terminals of some sort. And I was like, are these the pillars that I unlocked? No, the pillars are past a gauntlet on on the, the surface of the planet, which I... I don't know. I I did actually see someone claim that there was a way past the the gauntlet without needing to go through it again. I was like, was there really? Did I miss that? I never I found it. Did not ever actually confirm it. Um, I went through that gauntlet like three or four times, which was not fun. <laughs> I did as well. I found it fun. I I, it. I also found the gauntlet uh, way before I had the tools to go through it. Uh, same. I don't think I even had the vertical boost. Maybe I did. But, like, it is required to have, I think, the last or, like, penultimate upgrade of, of the game of just infinite boost. And then you just have to, like, really precision your way through, never touch the ground, ground is lava. I mean, we say that, but I bet there's someone who's done it with, like, just the hook shot somehow. If it's possible, I certainly have not seen it. <laughs> it would be an incredible feat. Maybe if they had the bike. Oh yeah, like I heard, I was re- researching stuff l- later and then was like, wait, a bike? What is this about a bike? And a crown? These are parts that I didn't actually get to experience myself. I I did find them. I did need to look up where they were, though. Uh, the bike is like a secret joke 15th item, I think it's 15th, whatever, like l- the last one. Uh, you just have to like boost through a place that you normally can't. Uh, and I think it's only on New Game Plus, but don't quote me on that. Hmm. But basically, it turns it like your sprite now is it permanently on a bike until you turn it off. And trust me, you want to turn it off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then your uh, your movement is sped up such that I think you're always moving at like boost speed almost. Mm-hmm. And it also glitches out anytime you use the uh, teleporters. In that, like instead of disappearing, your sprite just kind of like flips and kind of like hangs in the air in the, like the geometry. It's like does not seem to be intentional. Weird. But yeah, it's just a really weird item that gets you through the game super fast, but also is unbelievably uncontrollable. And then the crown was actually pretty cool. Uh, certain room, it kind of show like references the crown and shows you like a, a path to take, but it's just like a bunch of arrows and tells you like what room to start in or a hint at what room to start in. And then you have to impose like superimpose that like the the arrows that it shows onto your map to show you like what actual path to take through all the rooms. And then I think you type in a code, can't remember, and then you get into the friendship room, which is just bananas. Like a whole bunch of like completely glitched out, corrupted sprites with uh, matching dialogue. Uh, I think getting the crown here also starts affecting the, like, the rest of the game where a bunch of the tiles will start like having a different color. The enemies will be like white stick figure versions of themselves. Weird. It's great and completely Easter egg, like kind of like, hey, you found a weird thing. Uh, same applies to that weird fisherman room. Fisherman room. There's a uh, a zone with like a completely inaccessible spot of like just this random dude fishing with a save uh, point near him, and the only way to access this is to like it's a fail safe for if your uh, map data gets corrupted hmm. on your save file, or you can tell, or if you edit it yourself, you can teleport there. And it's just like, hey, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> Something's gone wrong. Kind see. of a fun failsafe. Yeah, this this game is actually kind of chock full of random references and like Easter egg type things. Yeah, I mean, there were some secret rooms that I found. I I was apparently way better at finding the secrets that are not important than the secrets that are. In the long vertical shaft in the temple, with the uh, what you might call it, the spikes that go across that are vaguely reminiscent of Flashman to me. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, sorry, the one on the way to the boss of the temple. 
if you trigger one of the spikes to go across the bottom one and then jump up into it and go into the wall there's a secret room there i'm not sure if i found this one actually um that one just has a monitor that says congratulations you found a secret room (laughs) yeah and then if you try to exit it in a different direction than the the way you came in you end up in a random room just like ran- like a random room on the map yeah i don't remember where i actually ended up and i was like could this have been used for sequence breaking oh right i ended up in uh the derelict spaceship very closely before the massive flesh whose name i keep forgetting the name of Honestly, that's as good as name as any. I think it's, like, the plague or something, I don't know. Yeah, which is where you get uh, Dash Booster V, right? I believe so. I, I don't remember if I could have done that without getting having Dash Booster V already, but that would have been an interesting sequence break, if you can. Yeah, uh, to be fair, uh, the speedrun does not need additional sequence breaks. <laughs> They do this thing where they store the uh, teleporter uh, screen as they're going like going through the game normally, and then like if they trigger like a boss that require like has a text preamble, they can then like use the teleporter at the same time as the dialogue finishes to like completely skip the boss. They use that to, when they're turning on the uh, like security power. Like the whole like they beat the game in twenty minutes. It's <laughs> weird. Okay. Uh-huh. They also use the hook shot to kind of clip through those, uh, you know, you know those floors you were talking about where you can only go up through them but not down through them. Basically, they use the hook shot to kind of clip through those and get to the final virus boss pretty much as soon as you've. Oh right, yeah. As long as you're swinging on the hook shot, you can go through them, um, which it does actually use for a secret at one point. Did you find the music box? I did not. Okay. There, there's um. Down near the bottom of the map, there's a switch uh, that doesn't seem to do anything, right? Or, like, it does something in an area you can't affect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, And also, in the next screen over, you can actually go under and get to that area, but you can't do anything with it because the switch unflips, right? I saw that switch, and I just was like, this is weird, and I never returned to it because I couldn't figure out, like, how to get to the part that it opened. I eventually looked that up and found out that what you're supposed to do there is um, you hit the switch and then uh, that opens up the the bottom area and drains the water, I believe. And then if you uh, hookshot, while you're swinging on the hookshot, you can go down through platforms that you would normally land on. Okay, yeah. And then there's a music box under there. I thought that was a weird speedrun glitch, but apparently it is working as intended. Yeah, I guess so, because it's a secret that they put in that. I wonder if it's a secret added after just like, well, I'm not going to fix this glitch. Instead, I'm going to reward someone who knows how to use it kind of thing, because I know this game got updated a whole bunch of times. Yeah, I I don't know. But that's pretty cool. I don't know. I like this game. It's got a lot of cool stuff in it. Yeah. I like after after you like you, you play the one game, it like it turns the entire map into a big puzzle box. Especially like when it gives you like eleven different uh, areas. Like, okay, just a an oblique reference to a spot somewhere on the map. Type the code. Do this like eleven times. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, unfortunately, it does not uh, tell you that. Oh, this also leads to new game plus. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I guess I my my main complaint, I guess, is that like I wanted more in the way of lore drops during the post game right i don't i didn't feel like the post game made sense to be the same game as the regular game yeah um i i will say that like in terms of lore and story there's not a whole lot there i was looking at the wikia and uh couldn't really find much beyond the the phrase this is not explained. <laughs> it gets like I think this game is more trying to be fun and silly once well, after you've beaten it, rather than trying to have like a cohesive like world. Which your mileage may vary. I I too wish there was some more meat on them bones, but also the asteroid ending is pretty funny. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the you 
go and finish the regular game again, and then instead of infecting everything on your way home, you just get murdered by an asteroid. Like the same up until like out of nowhere, uh, asteroid hits you, and I believe if you fought the true Muaya, the second second form, in seven asteroid, it's his face. It's just silly things like that. Like the the your completion percent goes up to two hundred. There's just like a, a lot of things in this that if you have fun finding them for the sake of finding them, then cool. That's how I mostly felt until, you know, oh yeah, I got the crown, saw that weird thing. I'm good. But clearly there's still more. Yeah, I I, I just didn't really feel like going through things more once I had reached a certain point. But I don't know. I wanted there to be some kind of context it, which made sense for the conversation that you see the at the end of the post game, no, nah, it's just random ancient aliens saying, "Oh, basically, like at the end, if you're going for the new game plus route, Moa shows up and says, punish this guy. He's he he was mean to me.'" And then the ancient aliens are like, mm. "No, he owns actually." Yeah, he did the the random bullshit we put in. in. He's cool in our books. He's cool in our books, and then they uh, freak your bean, and then the te- the station teleports out of existence, and then New Game Plus starts up, and you have all your stuff, and no explanation is given. Yep. Yeah. That was weird. It was underwhelming. I'm not going to say that's not. It's just, I don't know. Yeah, so like I would compare that to something like Axiom Verge 1, or maybe even La Mulana. The game that we are always comparing everything to. Um, but it's too long to ever play again. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like in Axiom Verge, there's a lot of weird stuff. But eventually it mostly makes sense. It's a weird answer. Um, but like when you get the answer, you're like, you know, this is actually adding up. Okay. Okay, yeah. They were interested in like completing the narrative that... Uh they want to tell whereas i think in this game it's an excuse plot for the most part and just throwing up thrown in a bunch of things that uh the creator thought yeah this is pretty cool yeah just a uh, vague hints but like no real interest in giving any answers which you know it it kind of makes sense that uh Hempuli's next game was uh, like almost a pure uh puzzler <laughs> yeah um all right we've talked a good while about this um so sure where are we putting this on the stack rank uh, that's a good question. I should remind myself where I put all the other games, because I don't think it's going to go too high, unfortunately, because we've played some pretty pretty uh, hefty bangers. Um, I happen to be looking at it already. I, I pretend to be a professional sometimes. <laughs> all right, so... But not, not when I get to the outro, don't worry. <laughs> of course not. Um, so for me, I mean, I liked it. Um, yeah. I, like, I do feel like there are some flaws, which, okay, yeah. Listen, you, you've got to pick nits, because I'm just out here blissed out, being like, time doesn't mean anything. Um, and also, we are starting to diverge here. Yeah. Um, which is fun. I mean, there's still some things in common. Even though we both liked Maze of Gallius, we ranked it pretty low. <laughs> yes, uh, there, there were, like, listen... Like, that's a game where the good parts are what's interesting, so we said that, talked a whole lot about it, whereas some other t- other times it's just like, well, no, this is, like, solid throughout, but we gotta talk about the other, this other stuff. Yeah. So I think for me, I'm deciding, really, whether I want to put it as my new number three oh. or my new number four. Despite complaining about a bunch of stuff, I like I did actually enjoy it a lot. Sure, and like let's be fa- let's be fair here. Uh, despite the complaining about a bunch of stuff, you also quite enjoyed Iconoclast, which is what you're currently. Uh... That's true. I am currently talking about bumping Iconoclasts. I think I liked this one a little better, although it's interesting. I so Iconoclasts, I didn't like how the secrets worked in that. I feel like the secrets in this should have felt equally frustrating to find, and yet somehow they were better, but I don't know why. Why was I so much better at pixel hunting and like attacking every wall in this game? It's because the pixels were bigger. There are just <laughs> lots of them to shoot. 
Also, I, th- I think this game does lead lead you towards secrets a bit better. Like, there's a lot of times where, like, just instinctually, you can see, oh, there's there's another room behind this. There's this wall leads somewhere. That's d- this discoloration is. Yeah, a, f- a fair number of those I saw immediately on the the fr- like initial playthrough, and then they turned out to be things from the post game. I think shout out to like one of the first rooms. It's like um, the big room with water and a security gate to the right of the first save point. Um, I was like, that high ground is going to be a secret. <laughs> um, and then I came back to it when I had the traversal mechanics and i was like there's nothing here what the hell what and then finally that turned out to be the location of one of the keys yeah one of the things where it tells you like like unless you had the hint you're not gonna just wait there for a few seconds doing nothing yeah it's it's cool i don't know maybe people would have and they would have found the key early uh th- actually you know you can do that that's the the speed run uh, skips a bunch of the sequence by doing that yeah, I mean that that's fair. You can you you have to fight uh Muiwa so bad at saying it at uh to get one of the keys. But uh looks like you've decided that it is going to be your new number three, bumping down iconoclast. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. How about for you? So as you've no doubt seen, I've already put mine at number five underneath I- both iconoclast and symphony of the night. Um Despite me probably be- being more positive on it, I'm also more positive on Iconoclast, <laughs> and yet somehow also less positive on Symphony of the Night, but it's still... <laughs> these two things are still above... I don't know, I still like respect the hell of what Iconoclast was doing, although I think Environmental Station Alpha is a more pure gameplay. Like, actually, it has legitimate, like, uh, interesting cipher puzzles, so... It's definitely better than Guacamelee in my eyes. Yeah, <laughs> the the other uh, typo game, uh, Maze of Gallius, and Xanadu continues to languish at the bottom. Yeah, I'm I'm ruining the day in which we play a game that we decide is worse than Xanadu. Oh man, I bet there's some Steam trash. <laughs> I bet I could find something truly rank. Yeah, but. But I don't, I don't want to play a game that's worse than... I want to play a game that's at least interesting in being bad. Yeah. I, maybe we'll end up with something that, that's all equally old that is interesting in being bad, but still bad. Who knows? Uh, will it be this week? I know it's, it's your turn to assign us homework. It is my turn to assign us homework. Um, and I guess the other thing that we should discuss, maybe not very useful for podcast content because this is going to go up way in the future. Um, so it's September. Sure. Metroid Dread is going to be released next month. That is true. I, I'm i going to say we're probably going to both play that anyway, so maybe that'll we'll just try to squeeze that one in as an episode rather than have, having one of us choose it. Yes, that, that not a wild premise. And I'm going to choose a weird game. Because uh, talking about Metroid Pinball um, reminded me of the only, (laughs) that I know of, Metroidvania Pinball, uh, Yoku's Island Express. I had heard about that game, never played it. I'm not that into pinball, but it's an interesting concept, and it certainly uh, was talked about. Yeah, I've heard good things about it, so I'm willing to give it a try. I, I don't know. We'll see if we we come out hating pinball or discovering a new love for it, or I don't know. Honestly, just to shake up the the form formula here, uh, finally not not a just a uh, platform action game, but <laughs> excellent. That's fair. I guess we haven't really gone that far in terms of like things that are mixing in other genres. I guess the closest we've gotten is the the heavier puzzle focus in Iconoclasts and the like ARG esque puzzles in Environmental Station Alpha. Beat 'em up aspects of Guacamele and That's... Xanadu was mostly an RPG. Metroid Prime being an FPS, like we've done it, but like they all still feel the same, I guess to me. Like just different flavors, and we'll see how much uh, the pinball aspect really uh, changes things up. Yeah, but think that's gonna do it for us yeah uh you like the show follow us on facebook uh tweet at us 
at inverted castle p on twitter uh send any questions comments concerns uh tell us how much you like us uh how much the show sucks and how to improve at inverted castle podcast at gmail.com yeah it only took us forever but we do actually have socials now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh you can you can pretty much date uh when this was recorded from that <laughs> but until next time uh I've been Eric Fox. And I've been Thomas Blight. And, uh... Don't get invaded by a super intelligent ancient AI and bring the virus back to the the rest of the world and infect everybody. Don't do it, kids. Don't do it. Pretty sure I remember that Captain Planet episode. (laughs) Alright, take it easy.